Hey there, Subaru enthusiasts and automotive aficionados. Today, we've got a real treat for you. Feast your eyes on this, a 2006 Subaru Impreza WRX STI. And it's not just any STI. This is a high mileage and very neglected gem that we stumbled upon and it's ready to tell a story that'll keep you on the edge of your seats. And by gem, I mean the exact opposite. Now, I know what you're thinking, high mileage and neglected, how can that be exciting? Well, stay tuned because this story is about more than just a car. It's about passion, dedication, and the incredible journey of resurrecting an iconic Subaru from the brink of automotive oblivion. Join us as we peel back the layers of this once mighty rally legend, uncover its secrets, and embark on a journey to bring it back to life. But first, let's take a closer look at this unassuming yet remarkable Subaru STI. From the outside, it may look like it's been through a lot, but beneath the battle-worn exterior lies a heart that borderline refuses to quit. We'll dive deep into the engine bay, explore the interior, discuss the challenges that come with reviving a high mileage neglected performance car like this one, and what to expect if you want to embark on a journey similar to this one. Whether you're a Subaru fanatic, an automotive DIY enthusiast, or just curious to see how a neglected warrior can be brought back to life, you're in for an unforgettable ride. Hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and join us on this incredible journey with our 2006 Subaru Impreza STI. It's time to breathe new life into this old beast, and we can't wait to share every step of the journey with you. Let's get started. This must be the air brakes. Oh wait, no, these are the air brakes. Not just about every rim is in um, working curbed condition which is expected for you know a car where it's probably been through a dozen or so owners it's still gold which is great kind of gold and peeling but yep curb check wheels come free of charge so far all the common areas that um have rust on these cars right in here they can rust pretty easily is perfectly clean thank you subi sanctuary for informing everybody on how to find rust in the northern states but this is a clean car under here i'll pull the wheels off and I'll look underneath but all of this is is fresh the shock towers are great rockers look okay from what i can see the whole plastic piece underneath will have to come off those are notorious for trapping in gr grime and dirt but so far nevada and california cars are a blessing previous owner said the trunk release latch on the inside of the car didn't work but if you didn't know this will disable and enable that switch on the inside so now it works the springs are a little weak it doesn't quite pop the trunk up when you pop it you really have to pull hard on it so i think you can update or improve by replacing the springs underneath these bad boys here they they are gonna have to go that's just i got some random nuts and screws looks like holding them in but i it's just not my style nope nice faded clear coat on the wing the paint is actually in really good shape i'm gonna have to wash it and scrub it to check the rest of it other than this faded black roof wrap now part of me is saying that the roof is probably super faded as well or peeling but this is in bad shape i mean it's peeling cracking everywhere so when i get bold sometime i might peel this off and see how bad it is this piece is a little faded but i think it comes factory flat black and the hood scoop is also faded but that's not a big deal right now this is some kind of a rust spot i don't want to pick at it but it's hard to say what happened here. It looks almost like a bad repair job that cracked or some filler or something. There's a little bit of surface rust coming in behind this paint, but I don't really want to pick it off and get into it because, well, I don't really want to know what's there. I have a dark tinted taillight and a non tinted taillight. That one looks okay. I don't like the Alteza style taillights of the 06s and the 07s, but 
Hey, to be specific to the year, you gotta have it. This must be like a nightshade spray or something that was done. Thank you, wife and son, for yelling in the background. Um, you can probably polish this off. I'm gonna try to maybe wet sand it or compound it, just so at least they match, because right now we have left and right tail lights don't match. Okay, after a quick wash and vacuum, let's have a look. I think these are OEM floor mats. The driver one is pretty trash, but I think these came in all blue certain years, and then with the pink bat STI on another year. WRX Impreza 2.5 STI Impreza Outback Sport low logo. Okay. The seats are actually in really decent shape. They are pretty filthy. You can see all the dirt and the crust everywhere. There is some head funk on this one. It's always sticky and enjoyable. I think they'll clean up nice. This bolster is a little saggy but it's not ripped apart. I've rarely see that anymore. Um, what's that? Oh boy, I think we have some wires, secret wires going to places. All right, more wires. Looks like it's, oh, it's, 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 yeah. All right, goodbye. Uh, LED under lighting ambient lighting that's fancy the other wire must go to the other seat yeah all that will be coming out carpet is in decent shape i mean yeah you have some wear down there yeah you can still get this carpet brand new from the dealer like 350 bucks which i might do because they still make it i know this car isn't gonna be a unicorn pretty perfect classic car but you can't get stuff for the GC chassis anymore, so it really makes me want to buy everything I possibly can for the GD chassis. JDM hazard switch, headliner, uh, lighting's a little tough, but it's it looks decent, it's just dirty. The rear seats don't usually get much use. Well, in your older years, maybe when you're younger. Uh, carpet looks pretty good back there. We'll jump back there in a sec. But all in all, it looks pretty good. We have the low armrest here. I always like the tall armrest. People, some people don't, but I'm a tall guy, so I don't hit it with my elbow when I'm shifting. JDM shift knob. Look at this. There's neutral. First gear. Yeah, it looks like neutral too, but it's not. Second gear. Nope, not neutral. We got a, a wobbly wobble here. So that will have to be repaired ashtray is missing the ashtray part little little beat up little scuffed around the bottom whatever this actually still worked on the cluster we'll f fire the cluster up in a sec yeah, that's about it in the front aftermarket head unit there's an interesting one and there is a screw coming through the floor on the passenger side what is that What's that too? Why are you there? Are you holding in something underneath? Uh, are you... I, I don't know what's happening here, but that little mystery screw, we're gonna have to figure it out, or we can just pretend like it never existed. Back seats look relatively clean, just missing this. I think it's a cup holder that goes there. Back looks pretty good, pretty clean. Just needs a solid detail other than the quick vacuuming that I did, but I'll we'll probably pull the seats, shampoo the carpets, shampoo the seats, scrub everything. It's just been probably never done, but it's just just a lot of crusty buildup everywhere. Let's see what kind of extra goodies we got with this purchase. Mm. OEM fender that looks pretty much trashed. It is 
always a terrible sign when you, your car comes with extra oil, extra antifreeze. Ah, it's okay. And synthetic ATF in the trunk. Few extra goodies. I don't know. It almost looks like oh, heat shield for the turbo. Ooh, fuel injector clinic. Ah, hey, hey, set of injectors. Are they new? Are they old? Are they bad? Are they good? FIC 1000 CC injectors. They don't look trashed. With the harness adapters, might be something we could use or maybe sell. It's raining here, of course, so picked a great time to film. AEM fill pump. Is it used? Is it old? Who knows? Uh, 340L fill pump. Oh, ho, ho, ho. here we go. Ultra premium Napa pads for the Brembos, I'm guessing. Let's see, are they new? Oh, look at that, brand new. I think the owner said he bought them a long time ago and wasn't able to return them, so we can either keep them for spares or sell them to somebody that wants to run Napa pads on their Brembos. Hey, look at that. A 2015 owner's manual. That will be absolutely not useful for me. Maybe the engine. This is all 2015. So that's great to have. That'll probably go in the bin. Just just tons of junk. Extra exhaust wrap. What do we have in here? There's just old turbo feed lines exhausts a squeegee just you know all the stuff that you don't want to have old floor mats universal floor mats and this oh this is a wastegate with a turbo i have no idea what kind of turbo it feels i don't know what are they supposed to feel like a turbo we have the timing cover or the accessory cover. Well, the whole entire floor mat is sunk in. Oh, look at that, extra blankets to keep warm in the winter. They may, ooh, they smell not well. Not like mold, but just like oil and coolant and whatever these stains are. And you probably shouldn't be touching this. I don't see any rust. Not yet, anyhow. Let me get the rest of this junk out of here and give it a little clean. Ugh. This little beauty here, and by little I mean little, is absolutely hammered. Blades are all destroyed. Look at that movement. That's a lot. Moving and grooving like you don't want in a turbocharger. Let's see this side. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely gonna install this. That, that should be good to go. Just put it on and send it. Oh, it will make a mess. These bad boys were all over the car and I can't stand the smell. It's gonna be on my fingers now for three and a half days. Just awful. The trunk is cleared out as best as I could do. It's missing the hold down bracket here. It looks, other than some grease and oil spills, I don't see any rust starting back here at all. I mean, it smells so bad in here, I don't even know how to explain it. Almost like a, a sweet and sour sauce mixed with gas station air fresheners and soy sauce. It's the, it, the smell is just not, not good at all. We have the intercooler sprayer. I don't know if it works, but it has water in it. 
probably old, smelly, crusty water. And I can't believe these pieces are still here. We got a jack in there, and looks like rust free quarter panels. We'll look into that more different at a different time. Ooh, gotta leave this open for a few days. It smells. There's goop all back here. This needs to be, I'm telling you, sweet and sour. I don't know, something in here. It's got that funky smell though. Oh, say that hood is either really light or there's some kind of ooh carbon fiber hood struts. Look at that. Oh, it looks like we have timing belt replaced at 133,000. Hell, that's one less thing I have to do. Okay, she is dirty, boys. Look at that. Yeah, she probably has never been cleaned or washed under here. Oh, we have some aftermarket vacuum lines. Looks like, okay, modifications, because everybody wants to know about that. Looks like a parent intake, AMR, it's like cast or steel turbo inlet. I've never seen that. Cool, matches my dirty intake manifold. Samco hoses. Looks like they're oh, got some oil on them. Oil everywhere. I wonder if this is full of oil. Oh, just so much crust and dirt there. Air. Some kind of fuel injectors, maybe. Their uh, fuel injector fuel rail with what kind of injectors? They're like blue injectors. What are those? Lots of filth and grime. Fuel rails are aftermarket. What else? We're missing the top cover here, which was in the trunk. Ooh, Mishimoto. Hmm. Aluminum radiator. Oh, IAG fuel rails. And looks like some AN fitting lines. We have a aftermarket wrapped catless Oof, down pipe, a bigger turbo, and I don't know. We're gonna have to get into this bad boy. There is a lot of things to be discovered, like oil leaks everywhere. These are some serious winter tires. I mean, these holes here, all these little holes, those mean that you could put studs in here, right? Studdable? What are they? Man, they are winter arctic claws wow these are some serious serious winter tires i mean they're in good shape they feel pretty new i don't know how they're gonna last in the summer weather around here but hey at least they're not bald with threads showing that's usually how i get cars okay behind the wheel brembo's pads actually look pretty good on them still um, rotors don't have any grooves or anything. Um, I'd have to measure the thickness. Looking around, the strut doesn't look terrible. I didn't look to see if there was any leaking. Um, the brake line looks like it might have a little leak. It's coming uh, kind of everywhere. Let's see, from the nut here, it might be loose or cross-threaded, who knows. Fender liner is missing here. Looks like it might be missing the front a front piece too or maybe it's just one large section that goes under there I'd have to look I'm probably gonna pull off this fender liner and see how the uh, this front rocker cap looks see if there's any mud or buildup or junk in there or rust it's where you'll see a lot of repairs especially on Subi Sanctuary these guys do a lot of work on these um, jacking the car up was not fun these pinch welds are pretty much destroyed and they're actually pushed into and damaged the side skirt. So it's probably part of the culprit why they're popping off and don't stay on. Um, but yeah, people just abused and don't pay attention when they're jacking up these poor cars. I'm going to take off the plastic liner underneath the car and see what we have lurking under all that plastic. Other leaks from this view. Um, well... Yeah, leaks. Everything is nice and wet. All right, fender liner removed, or moved out of the way. Mud. If this was salted, 
a snow state, this would be completely rotted by now. But, oh, lots of clips and pieces of clips inside there. I don't see anything, do you? I'm thinking we dodged the bullet on this one. Well, I am starting to see why there is no rust on this car. It's because it has been completely oiled. And by oiled, I do not mean fluid film or some kind of a oil protection for the undercoat. I mean oil from the engine, power steering fluid, brake fluid. What else is under here? Probably gear oil. I mean, this is just slick as can be with oil just built up everywhere. Who knows where it's running down from? Look at the oil pan. Not great shape. Stock headers. Wow, look at that oil filter. Isn't that something? A lot of stuff is probably old and rotten. Lower ball joints, the outer tie rods, the end links. Especially with this kind of oil on it. When you get bushings that are just soaking in oil, they really need to be replaced as well. Motor mounts, you'd have to look closer at those. Those are probably some kind of aftermarket. Look at that transmission. Slick, high gloss finish. Isn't that something? Okay, look at that belly pan. I think this is pretty clean. Other than you got some bad spots that people been jacking the car up and smushing in a little bit, but I think let's look at the inside of that. These get rusted pretty bad too, but not on this car. I'd have to take the side skirts off completely to see the other side of this, but. That pinch weld still makes me sad. However, this has brought me some joy. I guess I should probably put these back or clean them off at least, but they've been doing some good. Zero problems. I need to find where that screw was. You know what? This, this looks like it's actually pushed up quite a bit. I don't know if I could capture it on camera. I need to compare it to the other side, but this, like part of the floor, looks like it goes up quite a bit. I wonder if somebody hit something or maybe, see it goes down here, it slopes down, back up, down, huge. Maybe someone shoved a jack under there once. Um, it's strange, I'll have to see what it's like on the inside. It is now off. Most of the clips look to be okay, or the holders, this one may have been repaired somewhere along the line. Seems to be doing okay. I don't know if the clip will hold there. Anyway, let's look at the important part. Hmm, rather than dirty, looks pretty darn straight to me. This is gonna a little ding in it. Rust wise, I'm gonna have to call this one clean boys. That makes me pretty happy. Just gotta maybe hammer this down a little bit and just don't use that anymore. <laughs> That's poor side skirt, look at that thing. Well you don't see it too much when it's on but the underside has seen some better days, maybe a little heat, and some prying, but I think we can reuse this. Sherby's getting another one and then having to get it repainted because who has the time and money for that? Driver's side front fender is looking not much better. Look at that. Uh, well, I guess stuff can't get stuck up in there when there's just holes and gaping vast openings catastrophe here looks like somebody just chopped off the whole front section of the side skirt which is disappointing so i guess 
paint and body might be in order. This has, something's telling me that front mud flaps were probably installed very poorly on here. Also found this walking past the car. This lip right here is bent. You can feel it with your hand too. Doesn't look like it's, or feel like it's losing any air, but definitely has a nice little bend in it. Well, it's not a total loss because the whole entire rim is curb checked. So probably looking for just a one replacement rim. You see these on Facebook marketplace and stuff pretty often. You could probably buy a whole set for like seven, 800 bucks. Maybe you could find one for a hundred. Under the backside, not terrible. We got a leaky diff. She looks like she's probably more overdue for a service like everything else. Um, there is one of the exhaust hangers holding on here. And on this side, there is, nope, not hanging on. And up there, nope. Just the exhaust hangers hanging by themselves. Not really doing much. The rear, what are these, chassis legs? Look fine, subframe. From what I can tell, it looks fairly stout. Got this bad boy. She makes a lot of noise, she's pretty rowdy. Don't think I'll be keeping that. This car first showed up on Facebook Marketplace because I was bored and I was browsing, as most of us car guys do, and I jumped on it. I drove out about 45 minutes away, and I met the kid at the bank. It wasn't running very good, so I called a flatbed from AAA, gave the kid the cash, they picked the car up and dropped it off at my house. So now my dilemma is, what do I do with this thing? I originally was looking for a donor car for the white 2.5 RS because I wanted to swap everything over, the drivetrain, the engine, the suspension. But now that I have this car, and I can see the kind of condition it's in, no rust, clean title, it's high mileage, about 140,000, needs a lot of work, but everything's going to need that lot of work that's this old, that's been through a bunch of owners, that has high mileage. So I don't think I have the heart to tear it apart. I mean, to strip this thing down, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of work, but I just don't know. Do I keep it and just have it as a fun daily weekend car? and the 2.5 RS, or do I strip it down and just make one cool car? I don't know, let me know. I've always loved the Hawkeye since they first come out. It's probably been my favorite STI of all generations. So I'm in a dilemma, not sure what to do, but I'm glad I found it and I'm glad it's here. I don't think I'll ever be bored now with constant things to work on, but I appreciate you watching. I don't know why it's beeping. There's no keys in the ignition. See you next time.